I think I drive a 911 because it's the most complete experience that you can have in a car. The 4S especially is the ultimate do-everything car in my opinion. It's truly fantastic. It will drive across continents. It will drive for your weekly shop. It is the ultimate daily in my opinion, which is why I daily drive it. I think people love the 911 because it's the perfect combination of design and engineering, but there's also a lineage to the model that no other brand has. I sit in it and I can immediately feel that history. Every time I touch the wheel, every time I change gears, every time I hear the sound when it starts, I still get that little fizz that I get when I start a 964. I can still feel some of that DNA, and I think that's what makes it so special. As soon as you get above 3,500 RPM, it is just a heavenly sound. To me, it's the best sounding road-going 911 that Porsche have made. It's throaty, and it still screams when you get it in the seven. It's just a symphonic experience. It's an absolute blast on a B-Road. And I think it's the last generation of the 911 that you could really have fun with on any road, no matter how wide or narrow it is, because it still has the dimensions of the later air-cooled cars. The Porsche 911, for me, it's a lovely combination of performance and design. My name is Benedict Radcliffe. I'm based in Shoreditch in London. I came from a background of building and making, so my dad was very handy, and he was doing all the old work on his cars, and friends were asking him to help them with their cars. I remember going to race meetings, and my dad's mate had a Porsche, and I loved it pieces that I'm working on at the moment. That took about five months, so I went from working in 10 mil steel to 32 mil tube, so the whole thing was cadded up, broken into components, and we put it together like a big Meccano set. I think everyone falls in love with cars that they see on the road when they're a kid, and for me that was the 996, and I think as a result of that, I don't have any animosity towards that model that anyone else might have. It, to me, it was the 911. It's the first time I've seen one of Benedict's sculptures at that scale in person. It's even better than I was expecting. It's incredible, especially in that dayglow orange. It looks like, almost like it's come from an alien planet. It's very, very special. And his studio and being able to see the place where they come from, the way he works, his method, has been a very, very special experience. So after I met Nat and we, I was walking around his car, the more it grew on me, it was an outline of Nat's 996 and trying to essentially reduce it to the simplest of lines and just try to capture as much detail as I could, but also keeping it very simplified and then it was sent over to my uh, friends in Corby who laser cut it on stainless steel and then it's been worked with various grades of sandpaper to give it a mirror finish. And it's interesting seeing the profile of the 934 and the 930 slant nose and putting it next to the outline of Nat's car and seeing the kind of evolution and that lovely kind of iconic 911 shape when Benedict showed me the final piece, I was absolutely floored. Seeing my generation amongst some of the icons in Porsche's history and seeing that lineage from 1965 to 2002 to today was very special. I'm actually just really excited to drive home and put them on my living room wall now. I think the final piece looks incredible. 